Next, now that the whole body of the engine is built, I need to make the pistons. So, I'm not going to go into great detail on making the pistons, because the process will be basically the same as the process in part two of uh, my Mini V8 air engine uh, videos. So, watching those videos basically will show you exactly how I make the pistons for this. There's only a few minor differences in the piston. It's slightly longer, and the hole is uh, 90 degrees off from uh, what it is on these, just because the valve structure is opposite of this. Well, I had finished the part that's going to attach on the end of the pistons to attach them to the uh, crankshaft. And I made them the same way as I did on the uh, Mini V8 out of wood. But I decided in this case, in this engine, I should really make them out of plastic like the rest of the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack glue these with the acetone and then compound scroll similar pieces out of the plastic. And this is the pattern on the uh, stacked plastic. So I'm going to make these cuts inward on the sides first. I've made it a little wider and thicker than I did on the Mini V8 engine. Because the end of the piston is no longer recessing into the piston cylinder, I can get away with doing that. Shouldn't cause a problem. So, drill my holes, make my cuts, and cut it out. It ended up being extremely difficult to cut these out of the plastic. I kept overheating and fusing together. But I did manage to get it done. Personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it again. I would make them out of wood. Brief overview of how the jig works for uh, putting the valve hole in the piston. Basically, you take the pattern, apply it to your block of wood, drill your holes, drill this one all the way through. Otherwise, it's very difficult to get the piston back out, but this way you can use something to push it back out when you're done drilling your hole this way. So you drill the hole through, drill the hole here, drill the hole here, cut out your notch. Then you can just pin the piston in. This assures the proper position of that hole when you drill it. Once you're done drilling it out, you unpin it, and you force it out. Of course it'll be hot, this one I gave a chance to cool. Now we have to, then you clean up the edges here. A small diamond bit such as this I have found works the best to clean up the, uh, the edges of the hole in the, in the uh, piston. Obviously you got to be very careful, you don't want to grind over to the sides too much or you'll have bleed through on the uh, when the engine's operating. Just make sure it doesn't catch on the other side. You just want to get the edges. Catches. We're good. I'm going to start working on the connecting rods now. Pistons are all made, so this, this will be the connecting rods, the centerpiece, and that'll be, I guess, what you'd call the web on the crankshaft. The easiest, what's easy about making a radial engine is the the crankshaft is so much simpler to build. Um, basically, I have the piece of brass attached to a small piece of wood. It will help me give me something to hold on to and uh, give the metal support as I cut it out with the uh, number two scroll saw blade. We have the pieces cut out here. Use a small sanding disc to clean them up. They'll assemble something like this. One piece always needs to be fixed on a rotary type engine in the middle of a twist. So 
So it'll go together. This will be sandwiched on top. Somewhat difficult to show. I've kind of pinned things together here. What I'm gonna attempt to do is put a little drop of solder in here. Just gonna keep this get this pinched tight together and uh, try and put a little solder on there to hold things together. Then uh, I'll be able to take the pins out and put the other connecting rods in. I'll have my main connecting rod assembly here for the middle of the engine. Here's the connecting rod assembly. I put in some uh, small pins and just a dab of uh, epoxy on one side to kind of hold them in place. I might put a dab on the other side too. Doesn't look too bad. The end has the soldered, soldered end is this way. And of course, before fixing anything in place permanently, you got to make sure they move easily. So when you put it together, it's not sticking. With the crankshaft assembled here, quick and simple. I didn't do a great job at cutting the holes in it, so they're a little offset, but I think it'll still work fine. I'm going to begin the process of assembling the engine. Um, I've added the uh, interior bushing uh, for the axle. I'm going to start by putting the pistons in. A lot of my other engines I made it so that there was room to remove the pistons or put them in whether or not the middle assembly was in place. But in this engine I made it a little tighter so that you have to actually unpin you would have to unpin every piston and take it out to be able to put it in place. My first attempt at uh, assembly ran into an issue these Either I was off a hair on one of my on my connecting rods or something, but they need to nest a little bit into the hole, so I had to carve some of the plastic back on the end. So with some adjustment, I think I can make up for it without having to rebuild much of the engine. If I can just get them to recess just slightly into the piston cylinder, I'll be golden. At this point, I've taken it apart and put it together probably six times, each time making everything looser and more freer. The first time I put it together, I could not spin it with my fingers, and the engine would not run at all. Needed some spacers in there, needed to loosen things up where it attached to the pistons, needed to uh, make the hole where the whole assembly goes on the crankshaft looser. Once I had it loose enough that it spun freely, it now works. build a stand yet and stuff but uh, we have a working engine pretty awesome